The main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine burned the Russian multi-purpose Ka-32 helicopter, located at the Moscow Ostafivo International Airfield, which belongs to the Russian Ministry of Defense. NV writes about this, citing a source in the intelligence services, the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine has released video footage in this regard, the helicopter was used for air support of the Russian occupation army, namely to provide logistics needs and evacuation operations, the Ka-32 twin-engine, multi-role helicopter is designed by Kamov Design Bureau, a Russian helicopters company, and is produced by Komerto Aviation Production Enterprise, the helicopter can be deployed to carry out special airborne search and rescue, patrol, medical evacuation, cargo transportation, logging, complex firefighting, and transportation of landing force. It can also be used to support police, special forces, and other law enforcement units. The Ka-32 helicopter is equipped with the latest avionics systems for enhanced operations in difficult weather conditions during both day and night. The helicopter features high-precision hover capacity and maneuverability. The price of the Ka-32 helicopter is 16 million US dollars. ATACMS missiles will easily destroy all Russian air defense in Crimea, military expert. The United States of America will provide Ukraine with ATACMS missiles in a new package of assistance, informs CNN. Last autumn, the United States sent Ukraine a variant of the medium-range ATACMS missile system, which can reach about 160 kilometers, while the longer-range version can reach 305 kilometers. Ukrainian military expert Alexander Kovalenko says that after the last attack on the airfield in the Zankoy area, Russian propaganda platforms immediately began to report that Ukraine carried out an attack with ATACMS ballistic missiles, but they were all shot down. Some time later, Russian patriots were completely covered with panic moods in connection with the real results of the strike. Subsequently, a video was published showing the launch of six MGM-140B Block 1A missiles, which was attributed to the attack on Zankoy. Based on this, the strike potential was exactly six ballistic missiles, Kovalenko added. According to him, in turn, on the satellite images published later at the airfield in Zankoy, six fire areas spaced apart by distance were clearly recorded. That is, all the missiles flew to their destination. The effectiveness of the strike turned out to be maximum, but the question arises, how many missiles of this type may be needed in general to disable the Russian air defense in the Crimea? We witnessed how effectively the division was destroyed by six ATA CMS missiles in Zankoy. In fact, thanks to the incident, the north of the temporarily occupied peninsula of Crimea is not covered from the penetration and flight of some medium and large sized objects, Kovalenko added. In general, the strike of six MGM-140B Block 1A missiles on the airfield near Zankoy disabled the entire division of the 18th Anti-Aircraft Missile Regiment. That is, this is the minimum indicator of the effective use of this component and it should be considered as a basic one. In other words, to disable other divisions, an impact potential of six missiles or more is required. I think you do not need to be a genius to calculate that. In general, a resource of at least 24 MGM-140B Block 1A missiles is needed to disable the long-range air defense components of the S-400 air defense system in Crimea. But again, this is if the goal is the complete neutralization of the S-400 air defense system in Crimea, Kovalenko added. Russians would take years to capture Kharkiv, Ukraine's National Guard chief. The Russians may attempt to conquer Kharkiv, but they will fail because it will cost significant resources and time. Brigadier General Alexander Pivnenko, commander of the National Guard of Ukraine, said this in an interview with Liga media outlet. They can try to conquer Kharkiv, but it won't work. They can only act conventionally, two or three fronts, as distractions, one primary. However, in the case of Kharkiv, this approach will be difficult because attempts to damage essential and civilian infrastructure will persist. They'll have to struggle for years to seize Kharkiv. Consider how long Bakhmut and Avdiivka held. It is easier for the Russians to change the leadership of the Russian Federation and forsake their goals than to conquer the city, resulting in the deaths of thousands more soldiers. 
Commenting on the new possible summer offensive of the Russians, Pivnenko assured that it will not achieve its goal, Pivnenko said. Russia will not be able to take either Zaporizhia or Kharkiv. Even if they try something in the direction of Kyiv, that's just for show. Although I expect some difficulties. There will be an onslaught. They will try to move forward where they can, he added. Recently, the Financial Times, citing Ukrainian and Western officials, wrote that Russia may be gearing up for a large-scale offensive in late spring or summer, intending to seize more territory in Donetsk, Kherson, Luhansk and Zaporizhia oblasts. In March 2024, the Center for Countering Disinformation at Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council noted that the information about Russian forces preparing to launch an offensive on the city of Kharkiv is part of Russia's propaganda of fear campaign and is not true.